Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trails Tokyo Fan Fest, that was a mouthful, was everything that I was hoping it would be. From upping the stakes to introducing new and interesting jobs to the game, one of the most important announcements slash, well, finally saying what you've been saying in interviews this entire time but just never did on, you know, an actual live stream. All of that put together, and Dawn Trail is looking like it is taking all the lessons from the past of Final Fantasy XIV, and having some version of all of those features. Now, what do I mean and why do I think this is so important? Let's talk about Final Fantasy XIV, let's talk about the state of the game, and Dawn Trail. Because I will be honest, I have not played the end game of Endwalker all that much in the last year or so. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing, a aspect of the game that I truly do appreciate and love is the fact that you can pick it up and put it down when it is convenient for you. And if you want to go off and play other games, which I have been doing, the game doesn't feel like it's punishing you for not logging in. And you never feel like you're that far behind when you do come back. And that's a great place for the game to be, and that's an aspect of the formula and identity of Final Fantasy XIV that I think is intrinsic to the experience. But... It is a game that I love and hold near and dear to my heart, and I want that to hold true for years to come, and I want there to be content to incentivize me to want to play the game and to think about the game when I'm not playing it. And Endwalker, personally speaking, didn't have much in the way of that. Does it have content? Absolutely. But does it have content that appeals to me personally for an end game progression loop? Not so much. So let's talk about Dawn Trail. Dawn Trail is bringing back a lot of those aspects that I thought were really cool about Endwalker's endgame loop. Deep dungeons, variant dungeons, that kind of stuff is really cool, but it's brought down, in my opinion, by the reward structure of Final Fantasy XIV. And it seemed like in Endwalker, those features, at least, were a substitute instead of having a Bosja-esque experience for the endgame loop. A zone for me to go into, to grind up, and to play with others to remind me that I'm playing an MMO, which is a feeling that I really think is important for an MMORPG. Now, I was a big fan of Shadowbringers for a lot of reasons, but two of those reasons are Bosja, as well as the Ishgard Restoration chunk of content. It gave me combat to do, and it also gave me crafting and gathering stuff to do. Those were reasons for me to log into the game that were fun and relaxing for me that I really did enjoy and gave me a good sense of incremental progression outside of just leveling up some arbitrary item level number. And with Endwalker, it felt like those pillars of content that were so key to my enjoyment of Shadowbringers Endgame went the way of the Dodo on the altar of variant dungeons and deep dungeons, which are cool, but they aren't my cup of tea like Ishgard Restoration and Bosja were, which is fine. I'm glad they're at least trying new things and trying different things as well. I don't want the game to stagnate or get into any singular formula for too long because that will get boring eventually. But Final Fantasy XIV is seemingly doing what Final Fantasy XIV does better than everyone else, and that is learning from its own past to make an experience better than what came before. Now let's talk about Dawn Trail specifically, because Dawn Trail has a Bosja-esque zone. We don't know much or anything about it. We just know that it's going to have one at some point. Cosmic Exploration, which has us going to different planets. Yeah, planets. Seems to be in the vein of Ishgard Restoration, though I'm gonna hold my expectations for that so far, since we don't know too much about it, but from what they said, it sounds like it's gonna be in that vein, or at least in that style of content, and that's two thumbs up for me. But it's also bringing back variant dungeons and deep dungeons. So it's not just a matter of either or now, we're just having all of them. That is phenomenal news to me, and while it may not sound like that much when you first hear about it, when you step back and think about it, to me, I think it's one of the most important aspects of Dawn Trail's endgame loop. We'll obviously have to wait and see how it all plays out, but I don't think my issues with variant dungeons or deep dungeons necessarily stem from the content itself. It stems from the reward structure surrounding it, and that reward structure is so important to MMORPGs and the desire to continually run them or to run them to begin with. You can have good content stand by itself without a good reward structure around it, sure, but you limit the replayability of it because of that. But if, if you have good content with great incentivization to run that content, 
then they work off of each other to create a whole greater than the sum of its parts. Having a dungeon that you can run multiple times to get different outcomes or boss fights or whatever, as well as a more challenging mode that is more predetermined, if that is your prerogative, is a great idea and one that I hope they expand on in the future, which is what they seemingly are. I was always looking forward to Dawn Trail for many reasons. One, I love the game to begin with, but also even when the game is not in the best state of things for me personally, I still relatively enjoy it and I like being being able to have access to the world and just go in there and bang out a few dailies or weeklies or whatever. I think in a lot of ways, Final Fantasy XIV is a comfortable game. It's one of the reasons I love MMORPGs so much and why I've played MMORPGs throughout most of my life. I started with RuneScape for many years, then when I got to adolescence, I started playing World of Warcraft for the better part of like 10 years. It may have been 10 years, that at 9. And then I started Final Fantasy XIV near the end of that cycle of WoW for me, and I fell in love with it all over again. It's a game that I can play and just log on and play when I want to really focus on getting better, or when I just don't have a lot of brain power that given day and just want something nice and relaxed to chill out in. Final Fantasy XIV in a lot of ways offers a breadth of content that caters to both of those kinds of mindsets and anywhere in the middle. So I think the game is at its best when it has even more content and more options of what to do when you log in. They've tried a bunch of different things over the last few years, and maybe not all of them stuck, as well as other things, but at least they tried, and tried to see what else is new, or works, or what people really resonate with. Sure, maybe in the long run, Island Expedition, not Island Expeditions, but like the private islands, Island Sanctuaries, maybe they weren't for me. But I'm glad they tried them. I would rather them try something new, and something that maybe isn't for me, rather than just get stuck in a rut, and continually churn out the same type of content over and over and over again, with little iteration or little in the room for imagination. There's a lot in Endwalker that I could jump into right now and really experience, because I've missed out on a lot of it just because I've been playing other games and doing other stuff. And when I say that, that's not necessarily an indictment about what is there. It's just one of the important aspects of an MMORPG is that it has stuff that appeals to you personally. And Shadowbringers on the whole had a lot that appealed to me. And it seems like Dawn Trail, at least, is bigger and better than ever implementing the stuff from the past that I really enjoyed and appreciated, as well as continuing to iterate on stuff they just tried. One of my biggest pet peeves a lot of the times when it comes to these live service-esque games or MMORPGs is when they try one really cool feature in one expansion to only abandon it in the next. Even if you didn't knock it out of the park in your first attempt, I'd rather you try it again, work out the kinks, and iterate on that formula to try to make it even better. Why put so much time into developing a new system or a new idea just to abandon it wholeheartedly just because you may not be on the money to begin with? So I'm really glad they're bringing back stuff like variant dungeons and deep dungeons because when I run them, they are fun and enjoyable. They just need a better incentivization surrounding them and a better reward structure, and I think people on the whole will receive them far more warmly than they have in Endwalker. But you pair that alongside bringing back stuff like Bosja or Bosja-esque zone, as well as Ishgard Restoration, or at least as a piece of content, like a pill of content, in that vein with Cosmic Exploration, which is an amazing theme to begin with, and striking, but also diverse in the aesthetic, and all of a sudden, I as the player feel like I have a lot of things to do, and that every time I log in, I have something new I could play or try out. That is a great feeling for an MMORPG. An MMORPG is at its best and at its strongest when you as the player feel like you can play multiple games just within that game. Asmin Gold's talked about this before when it comes to like stuff like World of Warcraft. When that game was at its peak, you always felt like you could log in. Maybe you didn't feel like raiding or something. You had a whole bunch of other things you could do and essentially play a whole different game while still playing WoW. Final Fantasy XIV and the endgame loop is very much in that style and I feel it's at its best when you have a whole bunch of extra options at your disposal. When Final Fantasy XIV's endgame operates as a buffet, instead of like a five-course uh, meal or dinner, I think that's when it's at its best. When I can log in and Dawn Trail and say, what do I want to do today? Do I want to do the new Bosja content? Do I want to do cosmic exploration? Do I want to run a variant dungeon or a deep dungeon? Do I want to go raiding, do the Alliance raid? Maybe a bit of PvP. Maybe the new thing they add to the Gold Saucer. Maybe I can go back and check out my island. Maybe I could go Glamour Farm, customize my house, rep grind, 
It's a whole bunch of things that is seemingly on offer when it comes to Dawn Trail's endgame loop, and that is really incentivizing and honestly just good. I would rather have too many options of great content to do than no options at all. And I know the popular theme or idea going around, especially when it comes to video games, is that quality over quantity. But when it comes to an MMORPG, to be the best of the best, you need to have both. And that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people, but you need to have both. And I think Final Fantasy XIV is shaping up to expand on already having both. I think the game is always, well, since 1.0. You know, I mean, 2.0. It's had quantity of things to do. Well, from Heaven Sword onwards, it's had quantity, but it's also had quality. And with Dawn Trail, it seems like, at least from the sounds of things, that the quantity is going to increase even further. And you can argue, but JMOs, we've had Barsha before. We've had Deep Dungeons before. We've had Variant Dungeons before. We've had stuff like Cosmic Exploration before, maybe, with Ishgard Restoration. But we haven't had all four of those things at the same time. And remember back in Barsha going from the Western Front to Zadnor? Sure, it wasn't a completely new experience, but they iterated on it. They took community feedback that people were actively talking about and critiquing in regards to the... Was it the Southern Front or the Western Front? It was, it was like one of those two. The critique that people had en masse about that, pil that pillar of content. They took that to heart and made Zadnor even better. Final Fantasy XIV, Creative Business Unit 3, genuinely cares about feedback. And they take it into consideration, and they try and better the game based on that feedback. Back. If you've played the game for years, it is readily apparent to see. And that's one of the best aspects and one of the most glowing recommendations of this game that I can have for anybody. When the dev team cares about improving the game and not resting on their laurels or having the game stagnate, they actively care about trying to make the game the best version of itself that it can be, while still retaining its identity but going even further and bigger and better. When it feels like the feedback that the community gives doesn't just go into some empty dropbox to be shredded and thrown away and tossed aside, but it's taken to haunt and actually read and cared about, and we see the fruits of that labor manifest into the game and into better pieces of content. They may not always get it 100% at the start, but they at least try, and over time we can see that manifest. I think that's a great place to be. And I think that's reason to be optimistic for Dawn Trail, because I doubt all of these pieces of content that may be returning in some form or fashion are going to be exactly the same as they were when they were first introduced into the game. Hell, look at Eureka going into Bosja, let alone Southern Front to Zadnor. Compare and contrast the states of the game, the idea, the identity of that piece of content, taking community feedback into consideration to make it a better piece of content that's more enjoyable and replayable. And maybe there's some people out there that prefer Eureka. Then I think it's important to let your voice be heard and about about specifically what it is about Eureka that you preferred. And if you preferred Bosja, what was it about Bosja that you preferred? A lot of the times when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV, it can feel like critique is kind of frowned upon or shunned. In a lot of ways, I think that is understandable because no one likes it when you come into their space and just talk crap about the thing they really love. Or, or a game or an experience that has produced a lot of great memories. I have a ton of amazing memories when it comes to Final Fantasy XIV. I love the game to death, but the game can always get better. No game is perfect. But one of the reasons after all these years since I started playing that I remain optimistic about the state of the game and the state of the game going forward is because I know feedback is taken into consideration. Consideration. It's wanted. It's valuable. They suck up feedback like a vacuum cleaner sucks up dust. <sighs> Yeah? Max suckage there. They want that feedback. And it's readily apparent whenever they talk about it. Heck, one of the things they mentioned not too long ago is they want the community to come to a consensus so they can at least take that feedback into consideration. I think it's important to always be as fair as you could possibly be. Understand that in a game like Final Fantasy XIV, there's going to have all these different pillars of endgame. Not every individual pillar will be appealing to you, and that's fine. I don't want everything to necessarily be appealing to me, because I want them to experiment and try different things, and then I can go and expand my horizons and try those things out, and maybe they stick and maybe they don't. But the way that Dawn Trail is shaping up, and the reason I'm so optimistic after this Tokyo Fan Fest, is because even if one or two things don't land for me, there's like five other pillars that I can look forward to. That's a great space to be in, in my opinion. And it gives me reason to be optimistic for the state of Dawn Trail. 
and going into the future of the game. We need to see how all the critique manifests into actual feedback or actual steps that they take in regards to Dawn Trail. We need to see how the incentivization or the reward structure for things like variant dungeons or deep dungeons is handled in Dawn Trail. We need to see that. Absolutely. We need to see how they tackle the new, like, Z Zadnor or Bajja-esque zone. We need to see that. Absolutely. Same thing with cosmic exploration. There's a lot of things where we need to wait and see. But if there's two reasons I'm super hyped up for Dawn Trail now, one was the video I put out a couple days ago where stuff like Solution 9 really piqued my interest in terms of the story of Dawn Trail. Whereas I was kind of invested before, now I'm super invested. I need to find out what's going on in this Matrix X Matrix-esque city. I want to find out. I need to find out. But also, it seems like not only the leveling will be interesting and fun, but the endgame awaiting us at max level and throughout the patch cycle of Dawn Trail seems to be super fun and enjoyable and seems to be the culmination of all the different pillars of content that I've really enjoyed throughout the last few years and few expansions brought into Dawn Trail and iterated on in the future. That's a great place to be. And I think on the whole, I'm super optimistic because of that. And with that, I think I'll call the video there for the day. Thank you all for tuning in. My pleasure for making the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out and helps support future content. And I greatly appreciate it. And leave a comment down below with what aspect of Dawn Trail you are most excited for, but also a little bit worried about. Let me know. I'd love to hear your feedback. Because like I said, they want your feedback. They care about your feedback. Now, I doubt Yoshi P is going to watch this freaking video. Probably doesn't, know, probably doesn't even know who the hell I am. But like letting your thoughts out there is better than just keeping them bottled up. Because there's aspects and perspectives we just may not be aware of unless we discuss things. And that's important. And with that, I'll call the video there for the day. Stay safe. Have a great day. I'll see you all next time. Go play some video games if you can. Yeah? And level up that job you've been meaning to level up but haven't gotten to, yeah? I see you out there. Yeah? Level 72. Yeah, let's get that up there. Yeah? Come on. You can do it. All right. Take care. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Until we meet again.